This is Cat Moss from Scowl, and you're listening to The New Scene. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The New Scene. I am your host, Keith, and we're back with another brand new episode. And we've got a great one this week. We have Sammy Siramataro from Drain. Drain are taking the world by storm right now. They just put out the excellent Living Proof LP this year, and we cover everything. The records, their story of coming up with other great bands we've spoken to on this show, like Scowl and Regional Justice Center. We talk about Gulch, all the crazy stories surrounding their merch drops. There's a lot of great stuff in this conversation. And Sammy is a super awesome and super charismatic dude. I really loved this conversation, and you will too. That's coming up shortly. But first, here's how you can support the new scene. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at New Scene Pod. Follow me on Twitch at The New Scene. Shirts. We have shirts for sale at Deathwish Inc. Long sleeve, short sleeve, we've got it all. Pick up a shirt. It's a great way to support the show. Reviews. Give us five star reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm trying to get us over 200 on each of those platforms. So if you have not left a review yet, hit that five-star button on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can write a review on Apple Podcasts, and you can leave episode feedback on Spotify. Also, you can always reach me at newscenepod at iodinerecords.com. Also, don't forget to support Iodine Recordings. Awesome show alert this week, Friday, October 6th, at the Middle East Downstairs in Boston. Garrison, the original lineup, Orange Island, Reunion, Pilot to Gunner, Sinaloa, and Not Bad, Not Well. What a show. You have to go check that out. That's Friday, October 6th at the Middle East downstairs in Boston. There's still a few tickets left, but get them because they're not going to last long. The new single from Horsewhip, Pain, is out now, and that's available on all streaming services. The album Consume and Burn drops November 10th, and I can't wait to hear it. Stretch Armstrong are headlining First in Flight Fest. That's this Friday, October 6th, in Greensboro, North Carolina. Wow, October 6th is a big day for shows, let me tell you. You've got some excellent choices there if you live in Boston or Greensboro, North Carolina. And finally, Hey Thanks are playing Fest. That's October 27th at How Bizarre. A ton of great bands are playing. So if you're down there, go. And now it's October. It's a brand new month, and that means a brand new sponsor. So say hello to this month's sponsor. Evil Greed Distribution. Evil Greed Distribution is an online store and merchandise company based in Berlin, Germany. Evil Greed is the online marketplace for bands and labels to sell their merch and for us to buy that merch. They have stores for all of our favorite bands. Drain, Incendiary, Power Trip, Scowl, Knocked Loose, Military Gun, Botch, and all of the biggest labels. Triple B Records, Closed Casket Activities, Flat Spot Records, and of course, Iodine Recordings. They offer very fair, very cheap and very fast worldwide shipping, especially to the USA. Check out the full line of merchandise at evilgreed.net and follow them on Instagram at evil underscore greed. That's evil underscore greed. You'll be the first to find out about all the latest merch drops. Okay, so let's talk music recommendations. Now, I've been listening to a lot of Drain since this conversation with Sammy. Can't recommend their records enough. California Cursed and Living Proof, those are the two I'm listening to the most. The two latest LPs, really love this band. And Hopes Fall, the Satellite Years 2.0 
Remaster. This is a newly remastered version of Hope Swall's classic 2002 record, The Satellite Years, and it sounds incredible. I'm hearing things I never heard before, drum fills I never heard before, vocal parts I've never heard before, guitar parts I've never heard before. I think there might be some variants left out there to buy, but most of them sold out. But you can hear the remaster on the streaming service of your choice now. Give it a spin. It's a classic record. I always listen to it this time of year. So it's cool to hear this new version of it as well. So excellent job. Hope's full. All right. So listen, check back in with me in segment three. We're going to talk more about Sammy and Drain. I have a new review. We're going to read that. I've got some listener feedback, emails, and different messages I've gotten from loyal listeners. I'll read all of that. There's a lot of stuff to cover, and we will do that. But right now, we are going to speak to Sammy Siramataro of Drain. Enjoy. All right. We are here now with Sammy Siramataro. Sammy, welcome to the show. Dude, thank you very much for having me, man. I'm, I'm very stoked to be here and just get to kick it for a little while, man. Thank you, guys. Yes, yeah, Sammy, thank you for being here. You know, you've had quite an exciting few years. Drain is doing a lot of excellent things. Your excellent new LP, Living Proof, just came out this year. You were just touring Japan, Europe, all over the US. And you know what, Sammy? We're going to talk about all that. But first, I want to ask you, how are you doing today? Dude, well, thank you, man. That's a, that's When you lay it all out, I'm like, damn, he's right. We kind of have been on the move, man. That's wild. Uh, dude, we're doing great. Today, specifically, doing pretty kick ass, man. It's sunny. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm like, we've been, you know, staying busy doing tour stuff. So as of like very recently, I, I no longer like work at like a job job. So honestly, man, I've been trying to occupy myself. So I was pulling weeds and like Windexing all my windows today in my house. So pretty epic little day. I'm kind of stoked. Oh, that sounds nice. I like when there's a rare weekend or week when there's not much to do. So I catch up on all that quality of life stuff. I'll mop floors. Oh. I'll uh, th- I'll think about making a dinner like and not ordering takeout, but then I don't do it. <laughs> and I'll clean up and do laundry and all that kind of stuff. It, exactly. Dude, that's been my, my tip. And I'm post up. I got my dog now. I got a little sparkling water. Dude, I'm vibing, man. I'm feeling real good. I love it. So you, what happened? You were picking up your scooter right before we uh, started talking? Yeah, dude. I lo- I got a Vespa and I just love this damn thing. And so I've been slowly – the thing that's what's, what's like trippy with Vespa is like it's every time you, you know you call like a, a, a motorcycle mechanic shop or something like you know store with a storefront. Every time like, oh, we don't do Vespas, but like I know a guy. So it's like a, I know a guy who like does a business out of his garage type thing and – uh so you just meet some characters. I found this dope dude though. This new guy is like this is like OG skinhead dude from Santa Cruz. You know, just total sharp dude. Just loves like you know like an old mod, like loves scooters and stuff. So um, he was like, "Yeah, I'll come back at some point. You know, next couple of days." I'm like, "For sure." And then he's like, "Yo, I'll be there in like ten minutes." I'm like, "Oh my god, it's one fifty. I'm supposed to hop on this call." So thank <laughs> you for your patience. Um, but yeah, I got my, the scooters up and running. We're vibing. We're, we're going to tear it up after this. Where are you living currently? Yeah, I'm in uh, Santa Cruz, California. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was there fairly recently and I loved it. It lived up to the hype uh, built up in the classic movie, Lost Boys. Yeah, dude. Yeah. What, what, what brought you here? Work. Work. I was there for, uh, I can't remember what account I was visiting, but the drummer of one of my old bands lived up there. So I was like, wait, let me hit him up. And then he took me on a little tour around and we went to the boardwalk and everything. It was really, really, really nice. Dude, I'm, I'm like one mile from the boardwalk. Yeah, that's my side of town. That's awesome, dude. I uh, I get so stoked, dude. I'm not from here originally, but like I have, I, I don't know. So maybe that's why I get like extra stoked when people come and like know and have been here. I'm like, dude, this is my favorite place in the world, dude. I love it. It's really nice. Northern California is where it's at. Straight up, man. Like I love from SoCal. I always have a special place. I even tried to move at some point, like in 2020, and I was like, dude, I can't. I got to go back up, man. My little quiet beach town. This is my jam. So you're not working any kind of regular job now. You're just doing the band, yes? Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't. Truthfully, it's been like a when I say you know my regular job. It's been it has been a couple of years actually, but I've been working. Um, Full time for um, a print a screen printing company that my my friend owns um, called Printhead, and so um, 
you know, my, my, I used to play in a band called Gulch and the, the guitar player is uh, the owner of the business. And so I had a really cush situation where like he, he obviously knows, you know, the nature of what we're doing. So when I'm, the agreement was pretty much when you're not on tour, you're not be working. So I uh, just recently, it's just been so much. We're gone so much. I was kind of like, dude, you, you, you deserve to get like real help. I'm like here one day, gone the next, like three weeks at a time. So, um, pretty recently, I, I you know, it's been kind of new. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's sick, dude. It's kind of crazy. I definitely like, yeah, you know, you, 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 you squeeze the belt a little bit and kind of, you know, definitely don't spend as much money, but, um, it's been awesome, dude. I love having time to just chill. Yeah. It's gotta be very liberating and maybe somewhat scary too, right? Because you, you have that lifeline, right? You have that, that job waiting for you when you come back, but now it's like we've broken the chain and we're out there in the world and we just got to make it work. Straight up, dude. It's, um, what's, you know, I, I have the, you know, I knew you did an interview with Scal recently. Um, yeah. And they, they're, you know, they're kind of the same tip where it's like, we all just gone too much, but like, they just, they're leaving, like, like just got the phone with Malachi. They're leaving today to start their full US. So if you're listening, definitely go hit that up in your city. But, uh, you know, in between tours, we were all home for like the last like two weeks. And it was like so rap. We're all like, no one, no one has a job. And it's like 80 degrees. We're like, dude, like beach day, like today and tomorrow and like get coffee. And like, we all just been hanging. Everyone's like actually being a productive member and like working and go to their, go to their jobs. And we're just like chilling. Like it's like high school summer break. It's awesome. That sounds like the best life, honestly. Dude, I'm, I'm very blessed. Very, very blessed. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the, uh, so drains drummer, he's, he's still got a pretty like cush situation. So he's, uh, he still works at a, as a roaster at a coffee shop. Um, and, uh, cat used to work at that coffee shop as well. So like, that's been our tip now. It's like, well, let's go loiter. Let's go get some free coffee from, you know, friends that work us get hooked up and just like sit outside for like five hours and just bullshit and get caffeinated. It's awesome. I love that uh, you know them too. Uh, it, that uh, that scowl tour isn't that with Military Gun? I just had yeah. Ian on the show. He was on today's episode. Oh no way! Okay, yeah, dude. Um, dude, Ian's the man. Yeah, they're uh, they, yeah, it's Military Gun, MS Paint. Um, God, I I'll be honest, I kind of don't remember who else. There's like five bands. Yeah, yeah. those are the I, I do remember that part. Yes, yeah, so they left today. I think they start tomorrow. Um, in Orange County at Chain Reaction. So yeah, those are. Dude, that's that's the thing. It's it's just a trip because that's like that's been our team, be you know, even pre pre scal pre everything. So it's like it's just cool seeing like all of us, like, you know, before Drain was doing anything that was like big and before they were even a band, like we were all just friends and like we just go to shows, book shows, play like in, you know, other small bands here. And so now it's like, okay, like, you know, I last time I saw them was in Germany. We played a festival with Scout in Germany. And it's like, dude, this is so crazy. Yeah. You know, I guess I'll see you guys at home, you know, like it's, it's, it's wild. Yeah. I've heard you talk about the scene there and the bands, many of which I've had on the show and, and, and just like, it's almost like the pandemic put everything in a pressure cooker. And then by the time things opened up, everything had just exploded. And there's, there's so much good music now. And, and I love getting to talk to everybody because, well, one, there's, there's plenty of negatives about the pandemic, but so much good music has come out of it. Either bands that, got started during the pandemic or had time to really buckle down and become serious during the pandemic. And it sounds like that's the case for Drain and a lot of the other bands, you know, in the area. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like, it's, it's crazy. Cause like we, you know, the buckle down, like, especially was like, you know, we love doing it. We did it as, as hard as we could. And it just, I don't think the demand was the demand was for, for Drain wasn't as there as our drive was, you know, where it's like, we want to go take over the world, but the people don't really want to see us yet. They don't know that they're, they were, they're going to, you know, we're going to become one of their like favorite bands or something. So it took our record dropping during COVID and, you know, people maybe having time to just be home and listening to it. But yeah, we kind of just came out swinging after COVID and uh, yeah, it's awesome. I'm trying to match up uh, my timeline history here. Did Drain get started before Gulch? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, like years, years before. Yeah, um, we started in 2014, um, and I don't think Gold started till 17 or eight. No, I don't think 18, but 17. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. were kind of going. That's that's what like led us to meet those guys. Was the same guy, you know, uh, my, my my buddy Cole from Printhead. Uh, Dre just put a merch order in, and um, 
you know, I, I, someone's like, oh, this is guy Cole. He plays this band called Spinebreaker. Um, he lives in San Jose, which is like, where it's like the same scene, but it's a different city, you know? So they, they're like 40 minutes away from us. And I was like, he, he came by, like, <laughs> I met him, like, I used to work at a bakery and he came by and he, he was like, well, I play in a band, whatever. I was like, oh, wait, you're, you own the screen printing business. Like, dude, I'm going to hit you up. And, you know, um, that's how we, we met. Yeah. So that, that was a couple of years after Drain started though. Oh, nice. Yeah. So how does Drain get started? You guys were in college in Santa Cruz, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they, I mean, like the iteration that people know of Drain now, it's the same name, it's the same drummer. You know, uh, but this, you know, it, it, it didn't start with the intention of being like a, a big band. It was like, we're all just in, in college as students. And it was like, yo, like, Hey, you got like a band shirt on. That's like, not really what I like, but like, you know, it's close enough. Like we live in the dorms. We should just jam type thing, you know? Um, yeah. So there was actually, you know, when they, I wasn't like the first, like they had a, I met Tim, our drummer and, you know, the old guitar player I just met and we, you know, we were friends and stuff and they had a different dude that was doing vocals and they did like a show or two with him and um you know then it whatever it didn't work out so i was like oh i'm down like i you know i went to the first drain shows it's like jumping around it was fun and it's like yo like you should you should sing I'm like oh i'm down like let's do it you know um and so you know and it took a couple of years for even like that like to kind of figure out what we want to do and what we you know what sound we wanted like our guitar player cody he played drums for a different band that drain would play shows with and so like you know one day he like filled in for us we need to fill in dude we were, we were kind of all over the place you know um, and so anyways, the, yeah, the iteration we know now that's, I feel like around 2018, like the drain people know that's when that like formed, but yeah, it took us a couple of years of just like playing around and, you know, getting ourselves figured out. Yeah. So while all of that is going on, Gulch forms who had a, a pretty excellent run mid to late two thousands. Yeah. So talk about that. You drummed for that band, right? Yeah. So, um, so I was playing drums for this band called young love which like didn't, it didn't do a whole lot, but uh, I was on drums and then Drain's drummer was on bass or guitar. And we were playing a show and my dude Cole, uh, I put an order in of merch and he's like, yo, I'll deliver it to you in Santa Cruz. I was like, oh, sick. I was like, yo, I, I'm playing a show with my other band at this venue. If you want to just come by, you know? And he's like, oh, for sure. So he just brought it to the show and he lived, his roommate was Elliot, the singer of Gulch. So they, he's like, I'm going to bring my roommate with me. And they came together. and so. They had, they didn't even know, no one here knew I knew how to play drums. So he was like, Oh, wait, like you play drums? And I was like, Yeah. He's like, Dude, like, all right, we'll stick around. We'll watch. And it's, it's funny because there's like a video on YouTube somewhere of like Young Love. We're playing this venue called Sub Rosa. And like, you know, they, they look a little, you know, Elliot looks a little different than, you know, he did during Gulch. You know, he like, he still had like long hair and stuff. But you, you kind of see the moment. Like, it's like 30 seconds in the set. Like, Elliot kind of taps Cole and they like point at me and they're like, they kind of like nod heads, you know, they're like yeah, shaking them <laughs> up. Um, and yeah, and after the set, he was like, dude, like, you know, I've got this, I don't really have like a name for it. I got this, like these couple songs written, but like, or um, I have ideas to write songs, but like, I don't really know a drummer who could pull it off. Like, Are you down? Just help me record it. I was like, yeah, for sure. I'm down. And, uh, you know, and he was like, yo, do you know anyone who can play bass? Like, yo, how about my, my buddy, Tim, he plays guitar in Young Love and drums and Drain, but you know, he's a good guitar player. And he's like, for sure. So, most people just know me from being at band, but yeah, me and Tim were both in Gulch. So like half the drain was in Gulch for up until, you know, I guess COVID after COVID, uh, our, my dude, Tim, uh, you know, he, he, he stepped out just, dude, we were just like kind of all over the place. That's the thing. Like people don't, I don't know. People don't get like, I was playing drums for bands called hands of God as well. And like now Gulch, hands of God, drain, they're all bands that, you know, people know hands of God, maybe not quite as much, but like, you know, a good amount of people know these bands, but like well, there's a time when I was doing all three at once and it was like, it wasn't like how it is now, you know, where it's like a local show and there's like 300 kids and it's crazy. Like we had fun, we played and we even, tour, you know, did some touring, like small touring. And it's like, it wasn't, um, there wasn't enough to even break even, you know what I mean? Which is like totally cool. Like we, you do it cause you love it. But um, yeah, you know, that's kind of why I was like, dude, like, you know, my dude, Tim was like, we were both like, dude, I think I have to leave one of the bands. Cause like, I, I just, we, I, we're too busy. I'm going to get fired from my job and like, you know, whatever. So a dream was always the focus, you know, but I was like, I was like going to leave Gulch and damn that actually, now that I say that a lot, I kind of connect the dots. I remember hitting up Cole and I was like, dude, I might, you might have to get a different drummer. Dude, like I'm too, I'm too busy right now with, with this and whatever. And he was like, well, how about this? What if you work for me? 
since the, you're going to get let go from the restaurant you're working at. And I was like, <laughs> man, you'd hire me at the print shop? He's like, I mean, yeah, like if you need a job. So I was like, oh, all right, six. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll stay in Gold. So I got a job now. So um, <laughs> yeah, kind of nuts. We even, you know, it's funny. Gold's only had two fill-in drummers because there's shows I legitimately couldn't do. And uh, Ian Military Gun was one of them when he was doing art. No. Yeah, he did two shows with Gold's, I think. All, see all how all the dots connect? I love it. It's crazy, man. And that's why, I mean, that's, I was pre-military gun. You know, he was doing a regional justice center where I was like, yo, who's a drummer who can play fast as hell? I was like, okay, like, boom, he's perfect, you know? Um, he can do it for sure. He definitely can. Yeah. So it's <laughs> it, that's kind of another full circle of like, now military guns, another pop band. It's like, dude, like pre, pre-military pre gun, like even playing shows, I think they just put music out. Like Ian directed like the Dre music video. And like we played a million shows at RJC like years prior. So kind of wild, dude. Kind of wild. Yeah, it sounds like a very vibrant scene, which is I came up in a very vibrant local scene too outside of Philadelphia. But it sounds like everybody's just playing, going to shows, supporting each other, playing in multiple bands, doing tours where we can. That's what it's all about, right? Dude, 100%, man. And that's like, you know, I don't know. Things are just so different now. That's what's, what's crazy where it's like, I don't know. I never even – we didn't even think about it. We did – dude, Drain, Gulch, and Hands of God, all three of us, we did like a 10-day tour down the East Coast. And we were talking about it recently. We're like, dude, I don't mean, I don't think any of the shows were like really crazy. Philadelphia was probably our best show. But like, I don't know, we played Long Island. I think there was like 30 kids there. And like, we were all talking about, like, dude, like, did anyone ever like, do we get any money from the door at any of these shows? We're like, no, I don't think we even asked. Like, I don't even think we like, we, it, was like it was like an afterthought, you know? Um, and we just, you just do it because you love it. And like, we were very fortunate because things kind of worked out in our favor where it's like, we got to really do it a little bit more seriously but we never started with that like as the intention, you know? How do you tour on the East Coast at that time? Do you drive all the way out here? Do you fly out here and rent a van? Because I'm just thinking about the expenses. Dude, so we dude, we got so lucky with that one. So we did fly out and we were looking at renting a van and it was like, we I mean, we really, we literally would have not even covered, like even co- kind of covered any costs. Um, but it worked out because... Uh, so Drain used to record with Taylor – or not used to, We still record with Taylor Young uh, from like Nails and Twitching Tongues. And he was playing that band Eyes of the Lord. And Eyes of the Lord was doing an East Coast tour and they drove out. So it was like a week before. And so they were like, yo, we'll drive out. Drain can use the van. You know, all you guys can use the van and the trailer and all of our gear inside it. But – You've got to drive it back to California because, like, do you, we'll just drive there. We'll do a one way flight home so we can all fly home and not have to deal with this. And so, yeah, it worked out. We just uh, we flew out and did it, and then three dudes stayed back and drove the van from like the last show and wherever uh, back to California. And that was like the only reason we were able to like you know kind of come out not in the red. Nice. So Drain and Gulch, I think, started picking up around the same time, right? Because well, 2020 it seems like is a big year for you because we have California Cursed by Drain come out in April of 2020 on Revelation Records, right? Yes, sir. And then we have Impenetrable Cerebral Fortress by Gulch come out in July of that same year on Closed Casket, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, they both came. Two LPs came out that year that we were a part of or I was a part of, and they both did really freaking good. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, talk about that year. I mean, that, that's uh, my head would have been exploding. That's that's great stuff. Dude, it's a trip, man. Like, So, I mean, we didn't – again, it's one of those things like the both those records were recorded like six months before they came out. So, the, uh, so it's still pre-pandemic. We don't know the world's going to end yet and music is going to go away for two years. We don't know any of that yet. We got no idea. In fact – I think even the Drain one was like six months old. The Gulch one was like a little older. I think we recorded about 10 months prior. Um, if I'm I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Um, and so, yeah, we were just like, yeah, we got, we got our songs. We're going to go in. I mean, and the thing with, with Gulch, that's that's why I always, you know, people will ask. I'm always like, dude, like I was in both bands. It just, you know, Drain was always like the, the, the priority. Like, and I kind of like. I'm a little bit more involved, you know, and in Gulch, I was always pretty much just like, yo, like I, we, I understand how cooks in the kitchen works. And I was like, dude, we do not need extra cooks. You let me know when I got to be there. And like, we'll write these tracks and I, I'm, I'm just drums. That's all I do. Ken, Ken does beach. 
I just do drums. That's you know, like, I don't need to overstep uh, or or anything like that. So it was like with with Gulch, it was kind of like, yo, let's just put this out. Whatever happens, happens. And with Drain, it was definitely like, yo, we're gonna put this out and like really try to get after it. So yeah, um, you know, both kind of went in. We just we we spent some time writing them. The Drain one, I, I remember spending a lot of time writing. Um, and the gold stuff, like it just flew by. Like Cole is like such a great songwriter. Like the songwriting process for those bands is, I mean, not just songwriting. There's the way that the, both of those bands operated was very different, but like still had the same high intensity, like high, you know, energy performance. But it's you know for live stuff, but like Gold, I don't think ever had a one band practice. Like m- maybe one full band practice where everybody was there. And most of the time it was just like, you know, Cole and I would like get together, write the songs and then he would track, you know, bass and guitar or like, you know, whatever. And then the vocals would get put on like the singer, Ellie would hear those songs in the studio for the first time. Like, oh, really? okay. and then just like have his like little note, his like phone, like notes app and just like kind of write lyrics, you know, whereas like wow. train, it was like, dude, like we, we practice. I mean, still now we still practice like, you know, twice a week. You know, when we were writing, do we would practice like, dude, oh my God, like four days a week for like five hours at a time. We'd just be in the studio, just like the, re- or the rehearsal studio, just like practicing our asses off. Um, and that's just how we, we, I, mean, I like it. I just, I genuinely like it. We all like it. Um, so anyways, the goal is right. You know, that was like, yeah, we put it out. Whatever happens, happens. Um, you know, Cole's a business owner. Elliot's a union worker. So they, they, for them, it was like, yo, like touring is never really going to be a thing for us. So like whatever mm-hmm. happens, happens. Whereas with us it was like, yo, we're ready to quit our jobs. We're ready to do our shit. If it means like we're going, you know? So that's just to, to set it up, you know, set the scene. Um, so then, yeah, you know, like we're dude, and it's crazy for drain. We did a music video for the song, the song California cursed. And it was like, yo, we're going to do like a, a crazy live. Like we're going to do a show, you know, a free show at a house. And we're like, we're, you know, either we'll shoot the video like on this Friday or the following weekend. And we ended up going the first weekend. And uh, it's a good thing we did because literally a lot of people, that was the last show they went to before everything shut down. Like I think three days after that show, they were like, you know, banned all gatherings and everything. So the video comes out, you know, the record drops in the middle of COVID. And it was still like, I refer to this era as like the Tiger King era of COVID. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, like where it was like, there's different, dude, there's different eras. There was like, you know, there was a Tiger King era. And then, you know, obviously there's, there's uh, the, uh, I like to call the overthrow the government era of COVID. There's a lot of protests and everything, you know, it's like, and it was crazy. Yeah. Like when it first started, I mean, dude, I thought it was kind of fun. If I'm being honest, I was like, yo, this is sick. Everyone's home. And it was like, yo, like everyone's like, oh my God, we're all like watching the show. We're doing this like at home, like challenge, you know, take a video, send it to five friends. Like we're all <laughs> home, you know, like it was still new. And so I think a part of that was like, people like, oh shit, like, oh, this drain record drop. Oh, we're all listening to drain. All right. I guess that's what we're doing, you know? And so it totally works in our favor, dude. Like everyone's at home at the same time. And it's like, yo, we're all talking about this. Fuck it. Let's listen. So at the moment I was bummed, but like now I can see through like, you know, un you know, skewed vision. I think it really helped us. But yeah, man, we had big plans for like, when the record was going to drop, we had like a record release weekend planned and like a tour we were supposed to do. Like, I think we were even going to go to Japan at some point. Like we were so stoked and it just, it all got like taken away. And so, you know, it sucked, but it worked out really well. And then, you know, a little different, but yeah, the gold record dropped in July. So um, by that point, we kind of knew what to expect. So yeah, we're going to play it. We're going to put it up. We're going to listen to it. It's going to be cool. And we'll play whenever we play, you know? But yeah, man, so it was, and then both, both records just got like pretty immediate, immediately got like received really, really well. And kind of the same thing where like, we're just sitting at home and it's like your phone's just like blowing up. Um, and people were just like, yo, and retweeting and reposting and sharing. And it was cool, man. It was, it was definitely bittersweet. You know, both bands were getting hit up with like, yo, like, so like in a year and a half, we're going to be doing this tour. Are you guys down? It's like, Dude, I don't know what I'm doing next month, next week, like a year and a half from now. I don't want to agree to this like month long tour. You know, <laughs> it was crazy, dude. Totally crazy. I'll never forget that. I, I took this podcast weekly right when the pandemic hit because I'm like, hey, I'm home. What else am I going to do? Right. Yeah. I'll never forget. I always tell this story. We had uh, 
Chris Hornbrook, the drummer of Poison the Well in one of the earliest episodes. So sick. And this is March of 2020. And he's like, yeah, things might open back up starting in February of 2021. And after the episode, me and my former co-host, we were like, no fucking way. It's not going to take that long. This is going to this is going to be three weeks tops of us being inside. And well, it turned out to be even longer than February. Isn't that insane, dude? Like when you think about it, I, re- I remember the same thing. We're like, yo, that's like incomprehensible. And, yeah. you know, and then you know, eventually you just like, you kind of accept it. Like, yo, this is life. And that, that's what life was, you know, um, for those three years, you know, it was like, I mean, dude, I'll be honest. I was, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but whatever. I was, I was rocking fun employment and uh, it was awesome. I mean, like all yeah. friends, we were just chilling, going to the beach, hanging. Um, it was rad. So rad. It's a lot of skateboarding. I learned how to start, start surfing. It was like just so fun, man. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned that it was fun in the beginning and it was for me too. And I'm not afraid to say that because my life didn't change a lot. I worked from home before the pandemic. I still work from home now. I got to take this podcast full time and figure out video editing and a little bit of sound editing. And uh, I just, I just, it was mostly fun for me in terms of like hobbies, you know? Yeah, dude. It, I, I didn't mind. I really don't mind. I mean, now it's yeah. life is back like even more full swing, you know? Like now that I'm, I'm, I'm not like working, you know, clocking into a job, it's like I kind of have that sense of like, damn, I'm like kind of found some peace again. Because before it was like, dude, and you know, I, I'm, I had a little bit of a commute for my job. So it was, you know, that was definitely a factor. But like, you know, our drummer, like, he still works and you know, he's, he's in town, but like, we get home from tour. He's still like, dude, we'll get home at three in the morning. And the next day he's always, he's right back at work, you know? Um, yeah. And just goes right back into it. It's like, dude, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's nice, it's nice to just be able to like, I don't know. I feel like everyone's mental health got a lot better, you know, like when we just had time to just take care of yourself, you know, it's not, not we, we, you know, and I think a lot of people, you know, you see like a lot of jobs like, yo, you know, we're doing like half day Fridays, you know, mental health, what it was like a mental health Friday. Like a lot of like my friends are working tech, like, dude, it's sick. Like it kind of changed the game and people are like, yeah, we go home early. We have some time to like take care of yourself. It's epic. Yeah. I didn't think about any of that stuff until, I don't know, recently. How old are you? You're 28? Yes, sir. Yeah. Nailed it. So I didn't start thinking about anything healthy until I was 35. Like I would stay up all night and go into work on no sleep. I would. There was times where I would wake up on Friday morning and be awake till Monday night. I was out of control. Like so, you know, for you to be this young and thinking about uh, taking some time and not just jumping back into work and all that stuff. That's healthy and that's good, dude. You know, I can only thank my fiance for that. I'm the. I'm like. It's kind of like wow. Like you feel like so like together. At least me. I don't know. I'm like. Yeah, I feel like. Oh my. I'm like. I got. I'm an adult. And then like. You moved in with my girlfriend. I was like, "Oh my god, there's so much <laughs> broken about me. I, there's there's so many things wrong, dude." Like, we're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I had no idea. That's like how you're like a proper adult. That's crazy. Um, what is what is some of the stuff you had to uh, fix, for lack of a better term, dude? You know what? I'm gonna be so real. You know, this might you know be gnarly, dude. But whatever. Yo, like hygiene. I'm like, wait what like basic hygiene still you know got but like you know like all like <laughs> like i don't know it's like my girlfriend like dude like i swear it's like you know a 45 minute like i like you know the skincare i'm like i have no idea what that word means i have never <laughs> heard of that you know it's like all these like oils and serums and things like that i'm like oh you like <laughs> We don't just scrub our face with like this super gnarly, like chemical, like purple liquid soap. I'm like, oh, I thought I've been doing my whole life. I had no idea, you know. Um, just do you moisturize now? Oh, dude, I well, okay, no. <laughs> Short answer, no. <laughs> I, I need. I, I've I've gotten a little better, you know. I found I found like a. I kind of was on a routine, then I kind of fell off. Well, dude, then we went to Europe for the first time, and I remember they, dude, like they don't, they just tell it to you straight, and they're like. How old are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm 20, you know, this time 26. Like, life has not been good to you. You look like father. I'm like, oh, sick. Or I'm all conscious, like, call my girlfriend, like, just here's my card. Just order me the full skincare line. Like, when I get home, I need, like, I need the serums. I need all that shit to, like, get back to being healthy. This is crazy. Yeah. It just, and food, honestly, food too. Like, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I don't eat like, I've eaten a lot better lately, but yeah, you know, just like, I don't know. I'll eat like whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, I had, I had one burrito. That's going to last me the whole day. I had a burrito at like noon. That was my, my breakfast, lunch and dinner, you know? 
And I'm, yeah, I'm like, oh, wait, like three meals a day, like vegetables, fruit, a lot of fruit. Like, damn, I really just like kind of, you know, when you're broke, you kind of just tune a lot of that shit out. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, do you ever see those memes where it's like, uh, it's like a folding chair in a room with a TV and that's it. And, and it'll say like women hate how little it takes for us to be happy. You oh, know? dude, I, I'm fair. I've, I've, been yeah, it's, there. it's a, it's a funny meme, but it, it's true. We really do live like cavemen if we're just left on our own. Oh, dude, it's, and it's funny, man. Like it's still, it comes out on tour, you know, like oh, <laughs> one of our, our, <laughs> our, uh, I was actually our manager, my, our, our manager, James, he's, he's like, you know, he's the best, but like, you know, he lives on the East coast. And so when we hop, when we're out there, you know, he'll, he'll hop in the van with us and, you know, which I love, he's, you know, he comes, he comes from that world too, you know, like be, been, you know, been in the van to being like behind the scenes. And he's like, dude, like I would never, you know, have you guys go out and do something I, I couldn't do myself. So, well, you know, I, I love that. I always have a lot of respect for that, but He's like, dude, you clean up so well. He's like, dude, you're like, you're defected, bro. You're like broken. I'm like, dude, I, <laughs> like, I, you, okay, here, here's one. Here's one. I, uh, uh, sh- shaving. I like to shave my face, you know, or whatever on tour. And, uh, you know, most people, you know, I'm, I don't know. I dabble in the, in the world of holistic stuff. And I'm like, yeah, like essential oils. That's, that's good. You know, it's good for your skin or whatever. Um, and dude, you're supposed to put like two drops of like tea tree oil or whatever. And like, it's good when you, you know, it's good soothing for your skin. Dude, I must dump like a third of this like container every time in my palms and just like <laughs> bathe in it. And he's like, dude, <laughs> he's like stuck up through like, dude, you're so broken. Like the thought is there, but like, yeah, it's just crazy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> broken, man. We're, we're learning. We're getting there, but you know. This, this. Here's a question: oh, Do you have a uh, do you have inside clothes and outside clothes now? That was a concept that was completely foreign to me that I've adopted. Oh, dude, I'm so on, dude. I I have inside clothes, outside clothes, dude. Like, it, I know exactly what you mean. Like, dude, I'm not gonna sit on the couch if I've been out all day. Like, yeah, if- I didn't even realize that, but that, it just like seeped into my subconscious, and I do it now. Oh, dude, 100. percent I'm like, and it makes complete sense. And even, dude, it's so weird that even like. I'll have friends like come by my spot and I'm like, dude, oh my God, like, I'm sorry guys, it's a mess in here. And they're like, this is the cleanest of any of my friends' houses I've ever seen. There's like a candle lit. I'm like, dude, like, I know, I'm sorry. Like, like, dude, what are you talking about? And now I'm just like, yo, this is how you live like an adult and like take care of yourself. And like, I love it, dude. I can like sit my little couch. I can like, I don't know, plants. It's epic, you know, it's dope. You know what? If you're doing all of that at age 28, Props to you. Keep it up because that that's the way to be. Dude, thanks, man. You know, just uh yeah. Trying to trying to uh take care of myself a little bit, you know? And it's done wonders. It's done wonders. <laughs> <laughs> so uh back to the year twenty twenty. Now, uh Drain is picking up steam, Gulch is picking up steam. We know Gulch ended up breaking up, but there was talk about the band maybe breaking up as early as 2020, but that didn't happen until 2022, right? Yeah, dude. So, I mean, I, um, like I said, so I had like Ian was filling in. That was right around the time. And I actually ended up moving to SoCal. Um, and that was, I mean, all the rest of the guys live up here. So I was like, dude, guys, like I, I totally get it. If you got to get somebody else, I might have to. And so, you know, I really feel like if it wasn't for COVID that, that, that kind of basically bought us however long COVID lasted, it bought us two years, you know, because I think it was just like, we were all like, at that point, I mean, like, you know, doing festivals and stuff. And it was like, yo, man, like, everyone's like, dude, I have like, you know, a business and work. And it's like all my off days and my off time is going to this. And it's just not like a priority, you know? So um, we were talking about it. And then, you know, I was like, well, there's COVID. So, you know, I guess everyone stopped. So whatever, we're all good, you know? And as it wasn't even like on a people, oh, they still, it's still now ask like, dude, are, do you guys beef each other? Like, dude, those are my dudes. I literally just saw like most of them a couple of days ago. Um, you know, we still talk and you no, know, it's, it's like not like that at all. It's just, uh, cause I think people really find it like incomprehensible. Like, why would your band stop? Or it's like, dude, it's kind of cool, man. Like some bands, just, you start with a certain intention and when you're, that's not the goal. It's not about the, like, we want to be the biggest band. We want to be the, this or that. It's like, dude, we just want to write some music and play. And we really, we got to do all of that. We got to do all of that stuff. We got to see all the U S play all the big festivals we wanted to. Um, 
like that was more than we ever wanted to, you know, that's, that's great. Yeah. That's uh that's something I didn't understand until fairly recently from my own experience and talking to so many bands on this show. Like my mindset before when I wasn't as involved in music, like a, a band like Gulch, you know, they have everything, they've got a record out on a great label. We're playing festivals and, and it's breaking up. My mindset was how could it break up? Like what, like why it's everything's happening, but Sometimes the pieces just don't line up. And like you're saying, sometimes it's not everybody's priority. Like it's just, it's just not working anymore. So it has to break up for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too. It's like, and this is, this is, we're so blessed. It doesn't, it's not like a, a, a complaint by any means. It's like, dude, like, you know, when you know that you, you can't do that, um, you know, you can't be like on, you know, and then, you know, not to like air on what you said, but yeah, like the Gulch is Cole, like the, our guitar player, he, he was, he wrote, everything designed everything all the artwork like everything is him um yeah i mean business owner he's got two kids that like that are young and he's like dude i'm not trying to like you know just hop in the van now and like at this point in my life and uh he's like but i also hate saying no i hate saying no because we go we hit it for so many things and it's like yeah we can't do that nope can't do that and it's like um you know we we kind of saw and then like you know we're playing shows and it's like dude we're like almost having to go into like logistics mode because people really liked our merchandise. It's, it was, it was a great situation to be in, but you know, when you're not, will, you're not at a point where it's like, yo, we don't need to hire. We didn't want to be a band where it's like, we need an eight person team to execute playing a show, you know, but yeah. that's where it was getting where it's like, do we literally can't sell merch fast enough? We're like, we can't seem to beat all this, you know, n- normally the way around it's like, Oh, like sick. You just, get a bigger team, get more, more hands on deck, get more things. But it's like, that was no, it was just never what we wanted, you know? And so I'm trying to think of what show it was. It was, I think we played with turnstile in Santa Cruz. And it was like, after that show, like there was, we had a great time playing. It was just kind of like, yeah, man, like, I feel like we've, I don't know. I just think it might be a good time to hang it up, you know? Um, yeah. And so we knew we were going to do sound and fury. And it was like, I think that's, that's the perfect show to close it on, you know? And it was like, dude, we go out on our own note, like in power, not in like a, you know, got to a point where it's like, Oh, we're like, you know, eventually like, Oh yeah. You can kind of tell these guys didn't want to be there. They're playing these shows or they're like playing sloppy because they didn't have time to practice or, or whatever it might be. You know, it was like, dude, we've, we've ran this course. We've got to do so many cool things. And, uh, and we know we, we aren't trying to do all that. So let's give that spotlight. Let's give that space to another band that wants that, you know? That makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, I read that the merch designs, that people really ate those up. Was it Chris you said who made those? Um, Cole. Yeah, Cole, our, Cole. our, our guitar player. Yeah, I mean, and it, again, think, like imagine like a perfect storm of like, you know, it's crazy, dude. Like, you know, again, not to air out you know anything. There's nothing, nothing private, but it's like this dude loves hardcore. You know, he's a young kid and puts an order in, you know, to someone for his first band. He's like, damn, like, maybe I could like make my own shirts, turns it to a business. And it's like the biggest customers are Gulch, Drain, Tsunami, Spy. Those are literally the biggest customers. Scowl, all these bands, and they're our friends. That like it doesn't get more sick than that, you know? Wow. Yeah, it was epic, dude. So what's the deal with uh, people eating up the Gulch designs? I mean, obviously the designs are good, but do do do, do they keep running those those designs? Is there still a demand for them? Dude, no, I don't, I don't think so to my knowledge. No, I mean, um, again, I think people, dude, it, it like the shit we've heard is so insane. Like I've had people come up and be like, dude, like, you know, we really like w- wanting to know, like, dude, like, was there like, you know, someone had mentioned that like, there's like, this was all calculated and like, oh my like, dude, it's so crazy. I'm like, yo, imagine that we start, a, you know, goal starts and the dude owns a business our first show, he made 10 shirts because he's like, it's our first show and no one knows us. And we played it. Dude, that's my favorite part. We played a show. Gulch's first show was so cracked out. It was like Jesus Peace, Year of the Knife, Hands of God, Jukai, um, all these dope bands in like the tiniest venue in Santa Cruz. And wow. we knew everybody there. And I think there's three people inside during Gulch's set. All our friends just wait outside. And all those bands like who like Jesus Peace, you know, they, we, we played with them later on. They like, you know, requested us on a show. They, they were big fans, um, you know, and they're just homies, but like uh, all these bands that we were, we played the first show. No one didn't care, you know? And so we had some shirts. We probably didn't even sell them all. 
And then it's like, as time goes on, it's like, oh, dude, there's there's only 10 of those made that's worth something now. And it was never a matter of like, yo, we're going to do this so we can like, we're going to make this like super limited thing. It was just like, yo, like I have some extra blanks at the shop and I'm just going to make some art real quick and throw it up. And like, if it goes, it goes, if not, whatever. Um, you know, you can't like plan that shit. You can't force it. There's, I've, we've seen a lot of people try to do, try to force things because they think we did that, you know, like, ah, I yeah. say, in speculation, I might, you know, that's not very, uh, humble of me to think it's just based on us, but just, you see a lot of stuff where it's like, like, dude, the, the big one was like the Hello Kitty, the Sanrio design that we did or whatever. I, I don't know if you, if you, you knew about, or if you heard about that. Um, yes. Yes. Dude, like total total fluke a girl in san jose uh was like hey like i made this design whatever like oh sick whatever six months goes by and we legitimately kind of forgot i was like oh man like we're playing fya in florida that festival we're playing that that's like next week it just crept up and you know whatever and he's like dude i don't know what we're gonna do i don't have like anything i haven't already printed you know and he's like dude like some client like ordered, you know, 30 hoodies. And then they, they wanted, you know, instead of black, they switched to like a different color. So I got these extra hoodies and he's like, dude, whatever. Like, I'll just put this design on this girl made. Like, and if they, if they sell this stuff, they don't, I mean, it's only 30 of them, whatever. And that's, that's literally it. You know, people are like, yo, like this is, they planned some crazy thing. Like, dude, no, we didn't plan it. <laughs> I mean, and that's the fair point. I'm like, dude, all of us are like, you know, respect, but on the same, but we're all like, dude, we're all grown ass men, dude. None of us watched anything we don't we're not like we don't collect uh hello kitty or anything from the san Rio company like it's like dude someone made this and it was like kind of funny none of us are like yeah you know, it's not our, our bread and butter like you and truly you never catch my ass wearing that shit you know what i mean like <laughs> like oh. so they think it's some uh master marketing plan or something it's like no we thought we could sell this many it, that's it and, and physically it's like i don't have time like i physically can't order the blanks and have them get to our shop in time for us to leave you know so it's like yeah. this is what we have this is what we're working with and, uh, you know, Twitter went crazy over it. And, you know, jokingly, I think people took it seriously, but jokingly, Cole's like, you know, here's our flight info at, you know, Tampa airport, whatever. Dude, people landed at there. They came to the airport to buy that hoodie. Um, <laughs> and he sold a couple at like the baggage claim at the Tampa airport. Um, That's amazing. Insane, dude. And so then we got to the fest with only like 20 hoodies because we sold like 10 at the airport. And so, and you know, that's the whole thing. He's like, dude, like, let's just, I, I, we wanted to watch whatever bands were playing. He's like, dude, let's just sell after our set. So p- dude, the, like through the pit, there is a line. There is a, <laughs> a conga line going through the dance floor of people waiting to get this damn Hello Kitty hoodie. You know, it's like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that's, that's the thing. Like, you know, I'm so grateful. And like, I'm, I might sound like I'm talking shit. I'm not. It's just one of those things where it's like, if you knew the people in the band, we are the least like, like the least on that tip. You know what I mean? Like all of yeah. us, like, dude, we don't, we don't care, man. Like, you know, people would come up like, yo, like, or you got, you know, we're selling for 20 bucks. You got like 10 and you're just stoked. You got $8 and you're stoked. Dude, take it. We don't care. This is not like a, a means of us trying to, we you know we, we have our jobs. This is not like a way of us like trying to like live or get rich or anything crazy like that. It was like, yeah, we, we're just dudes that are, into music and whatever, like all of gold's like, yo, like we're going to go fucking moshing. Like we're going to go mosh this band. Like we're not gonna be at the table. We don't have a merch guy. Like it's just us. And I like who is playing early. So whatever, if you want this shit, I guess you just have to wait. You know what I mean? Like, so if there was only 20 to sell at the show, was there like a, an uprising demanding more of the hoodie? Yeah, dude. Well then, and then that's what we're like, Oh, well, okay, whatever. They're gone. And then it's like, damn, we sold that hoodie for 30 bucks. And there's dude selling it for like a hundred. 400 500 dollars oh. and we're like well damn we didn't really account for that you know like and it's like again like not even like salty i'm just like dude i don't want someone to spend that much money so then we're like you know what let's just do a, you know i guess we could kill that by you know making more available now they're not worth that much money you know yeah um because you could just go buy one so we did like put a pre-sale up and i think we did like i don't know like 1500 hoodies or something insane we we're just like, oh my god, that's like out of control, you know. And then there was like other bands doing things with like Hello Kitty Company and like other like companies, like like streetwear companies, like doing you know the, the same design with like the pink logo. And it's like, dude, this is, you know, you're almost kind of like, damn, we made a monster. We didn't like we 
did not intend on this ever being a thing. So did that originate with Gulch? I've seen the Hello Kitty stuff other places. I think Zulu, I, I seem to have some association with Zulu and Hello Kitty, maybe some shirt design or something. Yeah. I mean, actually, I will say when that, because Anaya does Zulu, but he used to do Dare. And I remember that's like that. He, he was like legit. I mean, that's the, he's like legit a fan. Um, yeah. I think they did do stuff after, but I don't know if that was, he, he's he been a, he's been a, a Sanrio head. But yeah, like other, I'm trying to think, what's that dude? Is it the band Attila, the dude Franz? I'm pretty sure he did like a streetwear brand and like it was the same thing. And people were like, damn, like, you just bit Gulch and he was like, he's like, honestly, yeah, Gulch is dope. And I was like, that's crazy, dude. Like, yeah. So it's just nuts. You know, we, we, again, this is dudes that literally never wanted this, you know, we never wanted to be like a big band, never wanted a spotlight, never wanted anything to all of a sudden it's like, you know, that's what's going on. It's like, it's cool. But then it's like, oh, like this is just not as people. This is not what we're into. You know, like Elliot, our singer, he's like, dude, like, you know, he, he, you know, when, when, you know, if kids are stoked and, you know, they want to see what's up, and he's like, dude, I'm not like, I never, I, he was a pretty like low key dude. He's like, I'm not, I'm not like trying to be like rolling up, like taking <laughs> pictures with kids, like, you know, and then like being at shows that we're not playing and people are like, that's Elliot from Gold, you know, type thing. He's like, dude, this is, I'm just like a low key dude, you know, like this is not really my jam. Um, you know, and like, dude, like, and that was, that was nuts, dude. There's like, like kids like crying <laughs> when we're playing, like, they're like, you know, they're really, meant a lot it's sick but he's like bro this is like not what i am like i'm just not this kind of dude you know like um so you know i think that those all like it wasn't one thing and you know like i said we're all still tight but like slowly but surely it was kind of like yeah man like this is uh this is just more than we want it to be and it's just not you know that's just not the jam so it was like maybe we hang it up you know did you feel that way too like you weren't you didn't necessarily want the spotlight see that's the thing man like I don't want to say I don't want a spot. I don't, I really don't like a cheat. It's strive for like a spotlight, but I mean, but like, it wasn't I the definitely goal. Like, I, you know, I've always been like, you, know, like, you would, for, for, yeah, like I, it wasn't the goal, but I'm with it. You know what I mean? Especially like, you know, it's cool being able to like be, you know, a front yeah. man in a band that people know, but then be like drums and kind of lay in the cut, you know? But I was like, dude, like, I love that shit. And that's the thing. I'm like, like, Drain was fully, I'm like, yo, I want to get to the next level. Like, I, I love hardcore and, you know, at that point, now we've, we've climbed the ranks a little higher, but at that point, it's like, yo, like, I want to, I want to be, you know, playing later on the day. I, I want to be a band that people are stoked on and like, you know, even do things that are like outside of hardcore too, you know, like I would love to be like a kid's gateway band where it's like, oh, like I got into hardcore from Drain, you know, where it's like, I don't think a lot of the dudes and goals necessarily wanted that. So I was kind of in this like limbo where I'm like, yo, I'll do whatever. But I definitely, I did kind of advocate. I was like, yo, like, this is not like what we want then I don't think we should be doing that. Cause you know, I don't think that that is like right to, you know, to, to us. If, if that's not like what the goal is, then, you know, we should be having fun and enjoying this. And if it means like, you know, all those dudes still play in other bands and do other things. And that's, what's so crazy. It's like, sometimes like a band will just catch and others might not, but it's like, dude, like, I know like Cole and Ellie, like, dude, I think if they just rock shows to like, they're like day one friends like they were stoked and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Like that's actually pretty respectable, you know? And so like, you know, they do Spinebreaker who, who does have some good buzz as well, but it's like, you know, it's not pulling as many kids as like Gulch was, but they like prefer that. I well, think. yeah. You said uh, you and the guys in Drain, you were ready to go. You want to quit your jobs. You want to tour. You want to take it as far as you can go. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. I didn't quit for like, you know, cause we're like, yo, we're going to fucking make money or it's just like, yo, we just want to, we just want to do it, man. And we always like drain, bought a van like we were like yo we're ready to like get after it and that's the thing it's it was definitely i mean i'm not even gonna front like there was like it was definitely a weird like kind of juxtaposition like drain had some good buzz but like being in one band that was like dude people could not get enough of and like would like kill to have us come play or whatever and then being in a band like where like everyone really wants that and it was like the demand wasn't there yet you know it was like you know it hurt my, hurt my little my little feelings a little bit you know i was like dude like damn like i love you know i'm very proud of the work i did and the drums you know tracks i laid down and stuff but i didn't have like an attachment like i did when you know it's different when you're writing the lyrics and you're writing from your heart and you're putting in so much work and because you love it um you know and it just took a second now it's like i'm very stoked on where we're at you know like and things have really like came full circle um but we were hungry man and so it's like you should be on the other side where it's like damn like we don't want anything but we're getting offered the world 
And then the other, you know, it's like, it's kind of funny how that works. So things really start blowing up after the pandemic, right? You uh, you put together Real Bay shit. That was a big show in 2021 with Drain and Scowl and a bunch of others, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was, you know, there was the shows like, there was a big one that happened in LA and, uh, you know, like in like a, under a freeway. And it was like, dude, we got to do our own thing now. Um, and so that's what's so epic. And again, dude, so funny. Like you hear... You know, I think like, uh, you know, there's a couple of promoters like locally who I think were kind of not so stoked um, in, you know, a term that has been very popular lately. But, you know, the term industry plant was getting thrown out there. Was like, yeah, I think <laughs> there was some plants from the industries, you know, that were a part of the show because there's just no way that you guys were able to put a show together without the help from a promoter. And it's like, dude, that's the power of the kids, man. When you're when you're in a band and you're you're connected to your scene and you know, you know, you, you worked for what you got. It's like, dude, that was a six man operation, dude. You know, like, um, that's it for like, that show. I, I think that was about it. Yeah. Like, um, my buddy Malachi from Scal, you know, he, he did a lot of like the, the footwork. Um, and then Elliot singer Gulch, him and a couple of his buddies, they built the stage the day of their carpenters, you know, he's a union carpenter. So we built the stage, bought lumber and then, Cole and I, we were working at the print shop. And so we were kind of like, dude, like, you know what? In case this thing gets shut down, you know, it'd be kind of sick. We're, 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 mind you, like, there's been nothing for two years. All of our bands have some cool buzz. We've never done anything. We're with people. So we're like, yo, like, we we see how much merch we're selling online and stuff. And like, you know, kind of got an idea for how many people were going to come to the show. And it was like, dude, I think we're going to sell like a lot of merch, you know? And it was like, dude, like, to make sure that we can all enjoy the show, um, and in case this thing gets rolled to make sure we can just get out of there quick, let's do a merch pop-up store the day of at a different location. Um, and so me and Cole kind of like helped on that front. You know, we, we, you know, I mean, obviously it was Cole's spot and didn't take a, a ton of work other than like, you know, making a flyer, putting it out there, organizing it. And like me and Cole working our asses off to print all this merch. Um, we printed for all the bands that played that day and set up some tents outside. And it was like, it's crazy. Cause like, you know, this thing was on like a Saturday and like the Wednesday before I remember like two kids, like we kind of see these kids like walking through, like kind of like snooping around. We're like, Hey, and like, Hey, uh, is this where the pop-up store is happening this weekend? Like, yeah. They're like, okay, cool. We just want to make sure we know we're going to get here early. And it was like, yeah, we're going to start selling stuff at noon. And dude, we pulled up at 7 a.m. to like just seven up. There's kids already waiting. And it wow. was dude, insane. And so, yeah, man, there was just a handful of people. Um, that worked together and just made it happen, you know? And uh, we all just promoted it ourselves, pushed it. And, uh, you know, other people, like I remember like, like, like an audio company from around here was like, hey, we got one of your show. Like, we would love to offer our services. We'll do all that. We'll bring all the gear you'll need. And we'll do all, you know, we just want to offer because it's the first show that's happened. And we're so stoked that there's live music. And so wow. they had like three dudes. They brought a soundboard. Like they ran it, you know? Crazy, dude. Yeah, it was so exciting when music came back. Like, uh, I think the first show I went to that year was Furnace Fest. Uh, that was in September. But, it, you know, the, there was still stuff happening. But I don't know. Were people complaining to you at all? Like, there was a show that happened out here in New York. I think it was like Mad Bull and some other bands in Tompkins Square Park. And there was a ton of people there. But I, there was like a lot of online arguing like super spreader COVID. There was still a lot of that going on. Did you catch wind of any of that when you did your show? Dude, no. So I knew exactly what you're talking about the Madball show. Dude, for our thing, bro, it was like it was like COVID never existed. And like be be that better or worse. Dude, everyone was having so much fun and no one said a dang thing. It was awesome. I love that. Yeah, you know, I've heard that about California that people it wasn't like as much of an argumentative thing, maybe because you guys are more spread out or in cars a lot more. I don't know, but there was like a lot of fighting over here about masks and regulations and all kinds of stuff, like constant bickering. Yeah, dude, and I remember that. Yeah, for us, dude, people were like, yo, we, like we were so stoked and no one cared. And there was, you know, there's some people there like wearing masks. And it's like, yo, I mean, as long as that's kind of, that's my mantra, kind of, you know, I'm like, I'm, I don't know, I'll probably sound like a, you know, whatever, but you know, the COVID stuff, I'm like, dude, yo, whatever you're comfortable with, that's my mantra, yeah. really, man. That's kind of just in life. I'm like, yo, if, if you feel better rocking a mask, dude, by all means, be my guest, you know, like, and if you feel comfortable without, then like, don't. And that was kind of our policy. We we're like, dude, like, I, I don't care. Like, if he wants to grab a mic, you know, like, I'm gonna give the mic. I don't care. Um, 
And so, yeah, that was all of our first shows we played in two years. Wow. Um, it was crazy, man. It was so insane. So we know you've done a ton of stuff since then. Signing with Epitaph Records. When did that happen? How did that come about? Dude, so that that's crazy too. So we dropped California Curse in April. And dude, within like the week, they wanted to, they, you know, again, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I don't really care. They actually wanted to buy the album off of Rev and reissue it like within the week. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and you know, we got caught in some red tape and we couldn't do that, but they were like, okay, well then just let us know what's next. And you know, like, let's, let's sign for the next thing. And we're like, yo, like we're so stoked. Is there any problem with Rev? Were you locked in for multiple records and had to be bought out or anything like that? No, no, we were just on one record, which was really cool. Um, it was just kind of like, the, I think they, you know, kind of saw like the potential in this record. It was it done like, you know, whatever. I, I don't think it's pompous to say it, it done better than a lot of Rev records had in recent years. It, it, it did really good, you know? Um, no, that's just the truth. I would, I would guess. Yeah. As I said, it's not like a, you know, it's just the, the, the numbers don't lie. You know, they were like, dude, like they're not letting this thing go. So I see you guys everywhere, everywhere. Dude. Thanks man. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing too. It wasn't just a matter of like the rec- the record was good. The music's good. And, you know, but it was also like, Hey, this band's not going to break up in a year. Or in six yeah. months, these guys are here for the long haul. So like they know this is going to be a constant return, you know? And so um, that didn't work out. But yeah, and, you know, and Epitaph was like, oh, right, well, let's just do the next one. And we're like, we're down. But like we really worked hard on this record. We want to get to tour it properly and play these songs and really give them the love. And so we don't even know when we're going to get to play a show. We're just getting started with this pandemic thing. So Epitaph was really, really cool. But yeah, so we signed in January of 2021 like with Epitaph and we kept it a secret until August of 2021. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. They were like, dude, let's just sign and we'll announce it when you put out a single. And so we put a single out. Um, and then it was like still over a whole year until the album would drop out a year and a half. It was, it was a really long buildup. You know, I'm glad that the reception was good on the record. Cause I was like, I hope it's worth the wait. I hope people think it's worth the wait. And, Seems like they they thought so, so that's good. I think that was smart to give uh, California Curse some attention and get out there and tour and and do that and take the time, right? Because my my mindset would be like, oh no, this has to happen now. Epitaph will pull the plug. People will stop caring. But I think that was a smart move, dude. Yeah, and, and again, like we've you know, they were just really cool because a lot of people would have been like, oh, it's now or never. So you know, right? And they were they were like really patient with us, and like I, I really. You know, I, I don't know. At the time, I mean, I still don't know anything currently. But like at the time, we were still like, dude, I don't know. Like labels, like I, I, this is all like new. I, I don't know. We're just like dumb kids. And so that was, you know, and that, that was the thing too. You know, with like with you know with goals, for example, it's like, dude, like numbers and stuff. Like Cole's, you know, had a good knowledge because he's a businessman. You know, and he, you know, has you know some knowledge with that. But it was like as things were going, it was like, dude, I, I don't know. There's just so much going on. Like. And I don't know if that's like the move. Do we want to get like a manager thing? I don't think that that didn't feel right for them. But for us, we're like, dude, like we want to do this. So we started putting together a team, you know, now we've got a great team on the back end. But yeah, so uh, because there's a lot of stuff, man. And it's it's crazy, dude. Yeah, I I was looking at your tour schedule earlier today. And uh, geez, all those festivals that you played overseas. And uh, and there was, of course, the uh, headlining Sound and Fury set. Now, I read about this. You said you guys didn't know you were headlining at first, right? No, we didn't know, actually. They uh, they asked to play. We were just like, of course. Like, that's, I mean, we got to play in 2019, and it was incredible. And yeah. so we were just stoked to play it. And I, 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 I thought, I was like, we'll probably play, like, later in the day. But, like, I didn't think we'd be that that high up. When did you find out you're headlining? Dude, like, the week of. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, like, the week. Do they tell you, or do you just see your name on the flyer somewhere? Dude, we literally just saw the set list, like the day list. Like, I was like, damn, I guess we're headlining. That, that's got to be a good feeling, right? Because like I, my band did a small little five-day run recently, and some of the shows we were direct support, and I was like, oh, look at us. Like, yeah. we're, we're, really, we're really doing things. So, I mean, your mind must have been blown. Oh, dude, it was crazy, man. I mean, and, and you know, not for nothing, but like, you know, I feel like that would be like, you know, you said you grew up outside of Philly, you know, like playing this is hardcore or something for us. It was like, dude, like, you know, playing that, like just playing the fest is awesome. But, you know, we're here and like, we'd always gone to Sound and Fury, you know, or went to a lot of them um, yeah. just as attendees, you know, in the early years of Drain. And 
So it was just really cool, man. And, uh, and it was cool to see that, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I don't really like worry too much about stuff, but I was like, I definitely was a little like, damn, like I, I don't know. It's, it's very late in the day. So, uh, you know, I hope people are as excited as we are and they stay and dude, everyone stuck around and like, it wasn't like people left or anything, you know, it's just, it was awesome. Yeah. I don't know anything about that fest and I haven't been to it, but I'm just impressed because the setup looks really cool and it's just this sea of people. It, it, it just looks really cool. Dude, it's, I mean, that's the, the years that we went before were like in, um, in like a, you know, a, a theater, like a venue. And so to just be like headline the first outdoor year, like, dude, doesn't get cool in that, you know? Yeah. So I've read about you, Sammy, and uh, it seems like you're pretty outgoing, right? Like you are, you're out there talking with the people, you're at the merch table, selling merch, talking with everybody, right? Dude, you know, yes. Uh, 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 to a deficit. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is what I'm getting at. Now, I read a story about you. You, This was at This Is Hardcore, right? You were talking to people f- from morning till night when you played This Is Hardcore, and then you played another set late at night somewhere else and just completely blew out your voice, right? Dude, yeah. It was like, you know, yes. I well, think so I- what, ha- what happens? Like, well, can you talk at all? Were you able to complete the shows? Like, what what was the story, dude? Like, <laughs> okay, well, here's here's what I will say, and I think just like it's a good thing in life, and you know that's the way we try to operate as a band. But it's like just live within your means, and yeah. you know we apply that to a band. Like, dude, in my opinion, there's nothing worse than a band who's like, you know, played one tour, one show, and they're like. We've got manager, booking agent. This is our road crew. Our this, that, the other. It's like, yo, uh, <laughs> like, and and they're playing to ten kids. You know what I mean? So we're we're always like, yo, we'll we'll get to the next step when it's time. And you usually know it's time when you're in a fucking pinch and you're like dead. And then you're like, yep, I'm gonna remember this pain and I'm never gonna do this again. Um, and like we had done a tour before where I was the merch guy and I the same thing happened. Like we played L.A. And I sold merch all night. And um, by the time we got to play, I lost my voice. And so um, I was shot. And we and then, then that was day two of a you know three-week tour, two-week tour, whatever. And I was like, dude, from now on, we're going to get a merch guy. And then I just, I don't know. Then I was like, ah, oh, maybe it wasn't that bad. I probably just, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll just do it a little different, you know? And anyways, yeah, this hardcore comes, sling merch all day, and it's awesome. And again, like, dude, it's, it sounds like, oh, like, I lost my voice. Like, yo, that's the coolest thing in the world. And, like, it it sucks, man. It bums me out because, dude, I was working at a print shop, so I print our merch, I sell our merch, and then I play in the band that makes people want to buy the merch, you know? And, like, it was the coolest thing, man. And, like, I really – I love it, dude. I love people. I love talking to people. And – you know, when you're a band, I mean, for years, dude, no one gave any, they didn't care about us. So now to be in a band where it's like, yo, there's a huge line at our table. People are so excited. They're stoked. Dude, I want to be the face that's personally there to be like, thank you. And like, give them a hug and shake that hand. And, you know, like it gets me stoked, man. Um, And so it's, it's tough. It hurts to like, it really does like bum me out that like I've had to not be able to do that anymore because it's just, you know, I can't, then I can't sing. I can't do the job I'm actually there to do. So yeah, I was just smoked, dude. I was just so smoked. But again, dude, like people like our music and it, we're a band that writes songs that are singable, you know, sing alongable. I don't know. They, kids want to sing it. So um, I'm very lucky, dude, that like kids, when I even when I got a blown out voice, I could just like put the mic out and kids want to help me out. And I'm, my voice is broken, but my body's not. So I'm like, yo, you take the mic. I'm going to dive in the crowd. And, you know, put, at least put on a good show. Yeah, that's the great thing about a hardcore bands and bands like that. You you can just have the crowd help you out. It's great, man. So that was that one. And we we did stick to it after that. It was like, dude, I can't, you know, and, I, and I've had to get like, you know, get our, the other guys. That's the other guys, we all like doing it. But it is just one of those things, man. We've, we've recognized that we're like, dude, you know, we're just, we're a band where it's like, yo, if you're doing this right, then you're not doing anything else, you know? And yeah. like- you know, for us, when, when it was like, you know, our drummer, it was like our drummer and guitar player, and they would do it. But then it's like, oh, wait, like now it's time to play. And like, we didn't get a chance to get warmed up. And like, we don't have a chance to like, you know, get our stuff, our gear ready or whatever it might be. It's like, you know, in a lot of the shows we're playing now, it's like, oh, the merch is on the other side of the venue, you know? And so the only way there, you got to walk through the crowd and like, 
it's like, dude, it's not just as easy as being like, yo, like the days of like, yo, I sold three shirts and that's it. And we got to chill. And that was, those were great days, but it's just different, you know? When I heard this story about you you're using your voice all day and you're at the merch table and talking to everybody, I felt anxious for you. I was like, what is he doing? He's going to blow out his voice. He should be secluded away somewhere, not talking all day from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. So, so I guess you're, you're taking the time to do that now, right? Dude, trying to, man. Yeah. I mean, I, do, <laughs> I, like, I don't know. I'm always getting, I'm always losing my voice. It's like the first thing to go, but you know, and sometimes I just, I get stoked. I'm too pumped and I'm just like all rationale leaves. And I'm just like screaming or whatever. And it's like, oh, we're in the van. I'm yelling. And it's like, dude, I just lose my voice. I don't know. So I'm still getting that part figured out. This last tour, that full US we did was the first one where I was like, I'm literally going to not speak all day. And I was like typing things out, like on Google translate. It's like, do you guys <laughs> want to eat? You know, like, um, <laughs> Cause I just, I, I lost my voice, man. I get all wrecked. That's the kind of stuff you got to do though. Like, you know, there's always like the trope of the singer walking around with the scarf in the summertime and like sipping herbal tea. But listen, if you want to deliver for the people, that's the kind of stuff you got to do. Yeah, man. I mean, dude, we're, we're, we're like, you know, I think again, like we're, we're still learning like this last tour. It's like we had, dude, there's a month long tour and we had four off days and we booked a show on the first off day. You know, and it's like, dude, like that's what happens. That's it's not like a surprise. And that's why I'm like, I got to stop acting fooled when I'm like, damn, I can't believe I lost my voice. It's like, what do you expect, dude? But yeah, I love it. I love, I love kids, man. I love hanging. I get it. I mean, if I was in your position, I'd be doing the same thing. Number one, because off days on tour suck. If I'm on tour, I want to play a show every day. I need something to do. You know, I, I just always need something to do. I hate sitting around. But your band, you know, a lot of people want to see you. A lot of people are excited to see you, and rightfully so. And like you said, you know, there was a lot of years where not as many people cared. So I would be as as excited as you are to talk to people and just take all of this in, dude. Yeah, man, it's the coolest thing, dude. It's it's so like few people get to kind of experience both ends of the spectrum, you know. And I'm just like so thankful, you know, and so. Just been trying to enjoy the moments and like, you know, appreciate it. Cause, you know, as, as, as hard as it was for us to get where we are, you know, not that we're like huge, huge, but you know, we, we've got a little buzz right now. Um, I know that, that can all go away in two seconds, you know, and it's just like, and, 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 and you know, like it could, you know, like people do lose interest and people really, you know, you, your team, someone on your team kooks it and you get, people don't want to rock with you guys anymore. It's like, dude, we're just, very stoked, very appreciative of everything we got. So just really trying to take it all in, you know? I love it. You seem like a very positive person, lyrically and just the shows. And I see people throwing like uh, pool noodles and uh, floats out into the crowd, which is fun. You just, you just always seem to have a very good attitude. But is there ever a time where you get pissed off or you're just like, fuck this? Or, you know, like, do you have bad days? Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I do, man. And, and it's, it's, it's so funny because like, yeah. <laughs> like I do try to be a pretty positive person. I've got, I've got days, you know, I'm mean, very, very much, uh, very much so human, you know, in that sense. Um, and like, you know, um, uh, I think that's funny because people are like, dude, you're always so stoked. And it's like, dude, yo, again, you know, now things are, you know, a little different, but it's still so new. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm in my, my happy place, man. Like I'm not, I just worked my 45 hours this week and now I'm in the place I like to be, you know, like, um, so of course you're going to see me stoked. And that's why I always like, I felt so confused. Cause I'm like, dude, am I crazy? Cause I'm just like, I do. I'm just like, I like something. So I choose to spend my time there. Like sometimes I'm like, dude, do people even like this shit? You know, <laughs> cause they seem so like, they don't want to be there, but I'm like, yo, like the world has so many options for you. If you don't like this, you don't have to be here, you know? Um, and it's just, it's always blown my mind. It's still now. I mean, it's like, dude, there's, no one is putting a gun to your head being like, play in a band and be here, you know, like, or, or just like go to shows, even if you're not in a band, you know, it's like, dude, I don't go here for the social club. You know, I go, cause I love this. I love the music. I love being around it. I do love the social aspect, but like, um, yeah, man, no, I, I flip dude. Sometimes I don't, I'm trying to get actually really trying to like calm down. Um, cause I, I got, I get a little bit of a hothead. I get a little aggro. Um, yeah, I, I do too. And I, I don't like, yell or scream or like 
throw things or anything like that. But I, I think I can, can get pretty intense when I'm upset and then I'll just shut down. And uh, that's not that's not very productive. Uh, so I'm trying not to do that. But when when's the last time when's the last time you got upset? What what was like a difficult time or or like what day when you were not posy? Did not posy. Oh man, I mean, damn, I don't know, dude. I, fl- I actually flipped a couple days ago, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, okay. Uh, I don't know, man. I I try to keep it chill, but like lately, I've just been on one, dude. I gotta like. Again, I will say that, you know, when I'm not, not, not having a job, like I, I, I do go crazy, man. Like I, I got a gym membership. So I've been trying to like do that. That makes me feel real good. But yeah, dude, the other day I just like some dude is just talking shit and I was on my scooter and he said some shit and I was like, that's it. I flipped around, like punked out this like old man. Um, yeah. <laughs> was like, he talking shit to you? Yeah, dude. It just, you know, what, what did he say? Like, look at this guy on his scooter or something. Dude, yeah. You know, he threw a cu- couple slurs at me, you know? And I was like, oh. dude, I'm just like, yo, it's 20. I mean, like, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, again, right or wrong. It's like, dude, like it's, it's 2023, bro. Like we don't need to be saying anything to anybody, but like, especially not like shit like that. You know, you're an adult. And so I just like flipped around. I was like, what you talk? You were talking to me and he's like, I didn't say anything. I was like, no, no, I heard you. And like, I had to punk some dude out. I was like, uh, <laughs> actually, I could have been good, but then I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it, nor do I want to be. I don't want to be like good at anything. I like I actually threw my first punch the other day. I got, I got mugged in Paris. Um, no. Yeah, what happened? I got, I got, dude, we were just walking to the venue and I was like with like three of our dudes, like, um, and just like little street dude just rolled up and like ripped my, like grabbed my neck and ripped my chain off. And like, I just, I was like, fuck, I just punched him in the face. I've never punched anybody in my life. Um, and he, I hit him hard enough. He dropped the chain. I got it back. That's sick. But, uh, um, wow. Yeah. You know, stuff like that where I'm just like, oh my God. Like I, I, sometimes I'm like, dude, I think it is like the world, like kind of being like, okay, Sam, like you gotta, this is like, we're throwing these at you because you need to learn how to make a boundary. Cause sometimes I, I think I will be too nice, man. Like I, I will. Um, and I got to make a, a, make a boundary, you know? And like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if that's like really how it works out. It's just maybe weird place, weird time, but I've been, been trying to get better at it. You know, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love that we've been able to be a band that like has a rep of like, just like, oh yeah, these they're just like cool dudes. that just want to have a good time and like want everyone to just like party and have like, just like make every show feel like a crazy party, you know, like, and everyone's just enjoying life. That's my job. Yeah. yeah. All day. That's the vibe. And it definitely comes across, you know, I was actually surprised I saw your artwork and everything before I heard the band a while ago, and I envisioned like a like a surf rock post hardcore emo band or something almost. So when I heard the the music and it was like super heavy, I was like, "Whoa, this is sick!" Like, so I like uh, I like that the visuals are a, li- a little different. Like they're very eye catching. They always have been. Who who does all your visual stuff, dude? Thank you, man. You know what? There's this um uh this guy named Silvio um. And I, he's from New Jersey and he just moved to California and we actually met at a show and he was just like, you know, he's like, Hey man, I was like a fan. I really want to draw something for you guys. And so we whipped up as like a shirt design and, um, we were like, dude, this, this guy rocks. Like, I, I don't know. just like, I feel like the, the style like matches like what we're about. And like, um, yeah, he's just, he's a rad dude. And so we kind of like one by one was like, let's do another shirt design. Let's do a flyer. And, um, you know, eventually worked to like album artwork. And now, I mean, he's just like our dude, you know, like we'll still get stuff made like once in a while from other people, but it's very much like, um, you know, this is our guy and we, we always, you know, we hit him up for whatever we can and it's rad. I don't know. I, I love that. And he's like, you know, he says like, dude, when I moved to California, I was like, I, I really hoped like I could get to do something for you guys. Cause you're like a band from here and you, you know, I, I would just, I've always loved, you know, been, he's just a fan. So it's like, I don't know. We really try to, I don't know, just like remember where we came from. It's like, okay, so like as hungry as we were, we were, you know, as a band and got cold shoulder, brushed off, whatever. It's like, dude, those are the people you give the chance to. The people who are excited who want to do it, you know? And it's like, we could have got art from anybody. Or, well, not, not anybody, but, you know, whoever, you know, the label had people they they could help us with. Um, you know, we're like, no, like there's this dude who's like, yeah, he maybe he's, he hasn't done like um a ton of like other, you know, album artworks or whatever. It's like, yo, there's a dude who's just rad and like a good person and like gets a stoked. So like, yes, 100%, let's do it. I love that. Yeah. That's my mindset too. You know, I've heard you say 
that uh, doing this band, you didn't have any connections, right? You built everything from the ground up. You made mistakes, all that stuff. And it sounds like you're trying to help out people along the way too. And I try to do that too, wherever I can. And I, I think that's the way to go. You got to give back, right? Do you have to, man. And that's, it's, it's funny. Cause I see like, there's both ends of it where I'm like, dude, like there's things that we had to go through that like, you know, maybe other bands won't have to. And, and you know, if, if it's up to us, like, you know, we try to help out. I don't know. You know, sometimes people are like, well, I don't know, like little things where it's like a band will be like small, like, you know, we should put them on the show. Like, dude, why did you put them on? Like, no one knows them. They're not going to bring anything to the show um, for, you know, and, you know, counter argument. It's like, yo, like, but that was us. And like, we wish we could ever got put on a show and no one ever gave us a chance because we weren't, we didn't know anybody and we had to like earn it. And, you know, by the same logic, people are like, well, like, why shouldn't someone do what you had to do? And so, like, at times I feel it, you know, but in other situations, it's like, yo, like, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, we wish we would have loved a, not a handout. We would just loved an opportunity, you know, picture your, your first band. You just, you know, put your first demo out and like you're bummed because you didn't get asked to open up a huge show. Like, dude, just, you just got to keep grinding. But like, you know, there's definitely a while where it's like, yo, I, I think we've got enough, you know, going for us where maybe we should, you know, it'd be cool if we could open the show and we never would get hit for like the local show. We were never like the opener. Um, it was always like the other bands that were, you know, had people that knew more people or whatever it might be, which now I also totally get to, cause when we are, you know, on tour, it's like, we only know one band from that area. Let's have them play. When right. do we know there's uh, 30 other local bands, you know? So we've been kind of like, now it's like, you know, like the last headliner we did, it was, uh, you know, we, it was, we had a big package, so we couldn't really pick a lot of other things, but like, you know, when we get the chance, it's like, dude, like. Who do you want to have open? We're like, yo, tell who, you know, get like a dope band and then maybe get like a band that's like new, but the kids and all their friends go to like all their shows, like the local shows, like those, those kids who are like make up the scene, put them on, you know? Um, and we'll get, yo, yo we're like, <laughs> like 17 year old kids and we're opening up. Like, that's awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that kind of stuff. And I think a lot, I think bands in your position or bigger or whoever can should do that kind of stuff because it keeps the whole thing turning. Yeah, dude, exactly, man. And and those kids, you know, there's this band called Vespid from New Jersey. Um, You know, we met, met some of these kids and they're like, just stoked. And like, do we started a band? I'm like, yo, oh, well, I'll tell you what, we're coming through. Um, Get a demo out. If you get your demo out by the time we play, you know, like in your area, we're going to put you guys on the Philly date. And so it's like, yo, they played a sold out show at the church. Awesome. You know, like um, the same thing, a band here from Santa Cruz. They're like, these kids we've known, like, yo, if you can get a demo out, we will put you on. And it's like their first show, they're playing a sold out thousand cap room, you know? <laughs> and they're like, dude, thank you. And it's like, yo, thank you. Like you, 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 you had a time crunch, you push, you got your music recorded, you put it out and now you got to play. That's sick. That's great. That'll probably give them the motivation to keep going too. Dude, and, that, and they're like, dude, and all of a sudden there's all these kids like, yo, I saw you guys open for Drain. And he's like, dude, we sold like, we bought 20 shirts. We sold all of them. Like, that's awesome. I'm, <laughs> I'm stoked on that, dude. Keep going. I love it. So let's talk about what we've got coming up. Now, we have Living Proof out on Epitaph Records. And listen, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you haven't heard the record yet, come on. Now's the time, right, Sammy? <laughs> I, you know, I, I'd be a little biased, but I say give it a spin, man. You might, you might like it. There's someone for everybody on there, you know? That's right. And uh, what about in terms of tours or shows? What do we got coming up that we can talk about? Yeah, so we've got um, – what do we have right now? We got – in every weekend, we got some festivals in September. So, like, we leave. We're doing this thing called Blue Ridge this this upcoming weekend in Virginia. And then the following weekend, we got Riot Fest in Chicago. So, we're kind of just doing the fly-in thing. Um, yeah. And then the week after that is Furnace Fest um, in Alabama. So, we've got those. Uh, what else we got? Um, yeah, like a, we're, we're kind of, we've been hitting it really hard. So now we're in a little bit of like a, a, a lay low, a little rest and restore period. Um, we got like a show in November, uh, like a punk rock in the park thing. We're playing with like descendants and, uh, God, who else? I actually kind of blanking. I think fear's playing. Um, yeah. Oh, so wow. We, yeah. Like, a, like a, you know, a little bit of a different crowd, but it'll, it'll be fun. Um, and then, uh, then we go to Australia in December. Yeah. With, uh, with anxious. So we're, we're really stoked. Drain. And anxious in Australia. Yeah, it's gonna be rad. Wow, that uh, that's amazing. I wish I could see that package. Uh, anxious, one of one of my other favorite newer bands. That's gonna be great, great times, right? Dude, it's gonna be so rad, man. I mean, and like we we've actually we've played some fest with them, but we've uh, we met them. We did a tour with that band one step closer a couple years ago, 
and like they were kind of kind of like me with goals. It was like half of one step closer was also an anxious. Um, yeah. And like the kids that weren't in the band were like you know like just like rolling with them, just homies. So we've like met all these kids, and uh, and they're and I say kids. I mean they they were younger. They're still younger than us, but they were, they were like a lot younger. That was like four years ago now. And they've just been rad. Like, dude, they're killing it. The music's great. And so we were just like, dude, let's do it. You know, like, um, let's bring them out. And it's, we're, we're just stoked. We're in an opportunity where we can do stuff like that, where it's like somewhere in the world. Like, I think, you know, they're like, oh, we, you know, we tried to get them for a different tour here in the States. Um, and it didn't work out with just timing. I was like, oh, well, we'll just do the next one somewhere else in the world. Let's do it. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, kind of wild, man. And we, I mean, dude, we're also like kind of on this endless summer tip of just chasing, like just chasing the summer. So it's like, yo, our <laughs> we're winter in the U.S. Let's go to the summer. Let's go to Australia. <laughs> I love it. Well, Sammy, I mean, the band is doing incredible things. I love what you guys are doing. So keep it up. And you know what? I can uh, I can see why people love you and the band even more now. You got me pumped up before the interview. Right before the interview, you're like, yeah, we're gonna have a talk. Let's do this. No one's ever done that before. No one's ever gotten me pumped up before the interview like that before. So thank you for that. Dude, well, thank you, man. And, and everyone else that's on the show, you step it up, man. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> we got to get these guys this stuff, man. Thank you, dude. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me. And, uh, you know, just, I'm sorry I was coming this late there, but yeah, just for like doing your digging. Cause you knew like quite a bit of stuff, man. Like, and everything you mentioned was hundred percent right. You know, there was all, I, I don't know. I, I appreciate you taking time to do a little digging on me. Of course, yeah. Uh, podcaster pro tip out there: Do not use Wikipedia; it's always wrong. Dude, all, straight up, man. Be <laughs> I always, I always want to be on my my Nardwar stuff, man. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, the <laughs> only thing they get right is like years. Like the album came out this year; the band was together from this year to this year. Most of the time, most of the time, dude. <laughs> dude <laughs> straight up, dude. Yo, you're stoking me out, man. Well, dude, thank you so much. Just send this my way when it's out. I'll get a, get an RT on it. Absolutely. Uh, Sammy, I really love the band. I love what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Have fun out there on the road. Just keep doing it, man. And thank you. Dude, thank you, Keith. We'll see you real soon, man. Later, y'all. Thanks for listening. And there you have it. Sammy Siramataro. Excellent excellent conversation. I really enjoyed talking to Sammy. It was so great hearing about his bands coming up, that whole scene and all the bands he came up with, Scowl, Regional Justice Center, Crossing Paths with Dare, you know, just hearing about all of them in bands, doing their thing, working together, playing together, coming up. It reminded me of my own scene in Bucks County, all the things we did, all the places we went, the very reason I began this podcast in the first place. So that was cool to hear about. Drain, of course, doing big, big things these days. Really happy for Sammy and the rest of the band. Gulch and all of those insane merch drops. Those were really interesting stories. And you know, Sammy is just such a charismatic and upbeat and super nice person. He got me pumped up before the interview. Like I told him at the end there. That's never happened before. He's got a great energy. Uh, I really like the band, and I wish them continued success. I'm excited to see what comes next from Drain. So thank you so much, Sammy, for coming on the show. Great, great stuff. So let's check in, huh? How are we doing? It's been a really rainy few weeks here in New York City. Nonstop rain for what feels like the past month. and. I'm fortunate I live in a ground floor apartment, but I don't I don't know if you saw on the news, there was a lot of flooding in New York City, record rainfalls, a lot of flooding, a lot of flooding, a lot of destruction. Thankfully, my apartment is okay, nothing flooded, all good here. Today was the first sunny, warm day in a long time, so I went over to Manhattan. My friend had a party, uh, it's this annual party that his community garden does, Went out, sat outside for a while, watched a couple bands. It was good to get out and do something because we've been stuck inside so for so long because of the rain. And, you know, with the rain, it's not like I could be inside because 
My day job has been really, really busy lately. Last week was the week from hell. I was driving to Jersey, upstate New York. I had to go over to Jersey City. I was doing another thing down in South Brooklyn. I haven't had a week like that in a long time, and I was completely worn out. My sleep schedule completely out of whack. It was crazy. It was crazy. And I've got a slow week coming up, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Otherwise, it's pretty much business as usual, gearing up for some Darling Fire shows in October. It looks like four shows total. Those will be announced soon. So hopefully some of you can come out to that. So hopefully some of you can come out to those. And yeah, things are pretty good. Things are pretty, pretty good. So how about this? Let's do some listener feedback. I've got a new review from Sean Carl. And this is a five-star review. Sean Carl says, so good. Behind the scenes of some of my favorite art. What could be better? Listening to the Travis Shettle episode now and remembering when I saw them in Reading, Pennsylvania with Me Without You in 2007. So good. Also love the diversity of artists that you interview. I love Wilderun and was stoked to listen to that one. Kurt Ballou, Stephen Brodsky, Adam McGrath, Toby Morell, Chris Enriquez, Chris Higdon, Norman Brannon. Come on. Also the format and the quality of the podcast is fantastic. Thanks. No, Sean Carl, thank you. That was great. And uh, listen, if you have not left a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, open up your podcast application on your iPhone. Every iPhone has one. Just search your apps for podcasts. It's this purple application. Click that, search for the new scene, scroll down, hit the five-star button, and you can write a review in Apple Podcasts. And in Spotify, it's pretty easy. You just search us and the rating system is right there. Click it, click five stars. And if you've only left a review on one, leave a review on the other one too. And I'm I'm nudging because I want to get us over 200 on both platforms. You know, having all those five-star ratings helps push you up in the podcast rankings, which will help the show overall. We're at 132 on Apple Podcasts and I think 182 on Spotify. So if you have a second, leave a five-star review. And thank you to everybody who has left a review, including Sean Carl here. Some other messages I've gotten from folks. This was a nice one I got on uh, the Norman Brandon YouTube video. Pedro says, I must say that my daily commutes are the perfect time to listen to you. As a mid-30s guitarist, I'm still grinding on the independent punk screamo scene, managing the band, family, and a nine-to-five job. And every time I listen to the pod, I get a boost of motivation. I can relate to a lot of what was said. Thanks for the great work. Awesome. Thank you, Pedro. That was a really nice message. You know, if uh, if listening to this show can help anybody in any way, and I know it has because people have written me and told me that it has, that's the best. Because, you know, hearing another podcast is what inspired me to do this in the first place. I was on the road for like a month in California, and I would just binge this podcast in my hotel room, and it felt fun, like hanging out with friends, you know? And uh, listening to Howard Stern all those years, that's another inspiration. So if people are listening to my show on a commute, or and it's helping in the mountain some way, that's great. It helps me out too, you know? I don't think I would have joined the Darling Fire had I not been inspired by all the stories I heard from all the musicians I've spoken to. I'm still plugging away in the world of music as well, so... That's great stuff. I heard from Mark.ua on Instagram. Mark says, you're doing such a great job with the pod. You're so kind and sympathetic and intelligent. Oh, I love that. You hear that, everybody? Kind, sympathetic, and intelligent. That's a great trio to be called right there. Thank you for that, Mark. And check out Mark on Instagram. His his Instagram handle is marc.ua. He's a Swedish illustrator and designer. He's done art inspired by Earth Crisis and Military Gun and a lot of the bands that we know and love, a lot of the bands that we've had on the show. I think he's even done some merch designs for Earth Crisis. It's really cool artwork. So check him out. And Mark, thank you for your support. You are awesome. I heard from Tristan via email. Tristan says, hi, Keith. My name is Tristan. And I've recently dove deep into your podcast. I got into it from your interview with Mike Taylor from Page 99. 
and how in-depth it was took me for a surprise. All the interviews are so good. A lot of other podcasts I find to be a bit self-serving, even if I enjoy listening to them, and yours is just a true fan podcast. I also appreciate knowing you are in recovery. It's odd because I think we're in a similar age frame, and a lot of the time frames of these bands' heydays I was around for and saw them, but during the time would probably have been doing my own music. I was so strung out on drugs, I could just never do it. I grew up in the D.C. area and saw and sort of know a lot of cool bands, but from 17 to 23, I was living on the street or in jail or in some other institution. Then it took me till I was about five years from getting clean to even think about music again. I was so scared of life that I just went to meetings, dove real deep into N.A., and just got a real job, etc. And Tristan is playing music again. He is doing it. He's in a band called Requiem. You can check them out on Bandcamp. And Tristan also has a solo project called Strange Mono. You can also check that out on Bandcamp. And thanks for writing, Tristan. Yeah, you know, uh, some, some podcaster insider information. I do try to come at things from more of an outsider slash impartial slash fan angle, because I just think that's more interesting. You know, if, if it's like one band person talking to another band person and the, the conversation is very contained within the music world, I think it, it can lack something sometimes. So my story is, or my goal is to just get in there, get all the information, get all the most interesting information, and uh, to kind of come at it from a fan angle, because I am a fan. I mean, I, I still listen to all this music. All the bands you hear on the show are what I listen to. And also, Tristan, congrats on getting clean. That's great stuff. I myself have more than a few years clean now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, the odds are against us. The odds are stacked against us if we're coming from that life and trying to get clean. So anybody that can do it and maintain it, it's a miracle, honestly. So keep it up, Tristan. And thank you for your support of the show. And listen, thank you, everybody, for your support of the show. The audience has grown a lot this year, and I really appreciate it. So, uh, you know, Instagram is the main hub. New Scene Pod is the Instagram handle. So if you're not following me, do that. I'm trying to do a little more to reach out and interact with people. It's hard for me because I'm just a really solitary person, and I work constantly. And, you know, like when everything's packaged and ready to go and out the door, I just like to shut down and lay in bed and, you know, stare at a screen and watch something. But uh, I'm trying to interact a little more because I think it will be healthy for me overall. You know, it's tough. It's tough. I don't know why. It just is. So thank you, everybody. So in other news, recently, Nathan Gray of the Iron Roses made a post on Instagram that grabbed my attention. Some uh, fan of Boy Sets Fire, who I think doesn't even know Nathan, sent him a message and, you know, was uh, pretty critical of Nathan and, and his recent coming out. And he said something, this person said something to the effect of you're an embarrassment to your children. Or it, it was pretty nasty stuff. And, you know, Nathan posted a response to that and said that he's tired of, uh, being treated like this by people, and he can't even post updates on the Boy Sets Fire page anymore because he gets all of these ugly messages from people, and you know he's tired of being nice to people and polite to people that send him these messages. By the way, Nathan, you shouldn't have to be polite. You know he was polite to this guy at first, and then I think he told him to fuck off or something like that. Nathan, if you want to be polite, message them to kindly fuck off. That's what I think you should do. But hey, it's up to you. But uh, no, I'm bringing this up because it's very odd behavior to message somebody in a band you don't even know and tell them how they should live their life. You know, I guess this guy is a Boy Sets Fire fan, and he's attached all these memories of his past to the music, and I guess in his mind, he's pushing this on to Nathan and making judgment calls about how Nathan should live his life and, you know interact with his children and how he should dress and how he should appear. And that's odd behavior. So listen, 
if you uh, feel compelled to message somebody you don't know and tell them how to live their life, how about just don't do that, okay? You know, if somebody's living their life and it's not harming anybody and it's not affecting you in any way whatsoever, just back off and let them be. You know, Nathan is a great person. I've had him on the show more than a few times. And to see him being treated like this, it's just, it upsets me. And it upsets Nathan too. So just back off and mind your own business. A good, a good rule of life is, you know, don't, don't give people criticism unless they ask for it. Okay. And look, I'm not putting myself on a pedestal. Uh, I don't think I'm smarter than anybody or better than anybody. Well, maybe some people, but I would like us to try to treat each other better. So that's it. That's all I've got for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed everything. We've got another big one coming up next week. So strap in. Oh, and uh, one more reminder. Don't forget about the Garrison Orange Island show this Friday, October 6th at the Middle East Downstairs in Boston. It's going to be a great gig. There's a lot of good bands on this thing. This lineup of Garrison hasn't played in like 20 years. Orange Island haven't played in like 20 years. It's going to be awesome. So if you're in the area, if you're nearby, go. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. And in honor of the release of Hope's Falls, The Satellite Years 2.0, we are going to end the show with the newly remixed Escape Pod for Intangibles. I'm back next week with a new episode and a new guest. So thanks everybody for listening, and until next time.